Hello and welcome back to Yashoda Hospital's online segment, The Health Talk Session. The latest advancements in clinical care and surgical oncology has revolutionized the way we deliver care to the patients. What once seemed impossible in the field of cancer research is now a reality. Thanks to the innovations and technology that have been delivered in the field of surgical oncology. So let's discuss about recent advancements in the field of surgical oncology in our today's episode. I'm Dr. Lakshmi and joining us on today's episode, we have with us Dr. Chinnababu, consultant surgical oncologist from Yashoda Hospital's High Tech City. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you so much. So, Doctor, with two decades of rich experience in the field of surgical oncology, tell us more about your journey in this medical field. I have been uh, practicing uh, cancer surgery for uh, over two decades now and uh, in and through my experience, what I have seen is that uh, of all the procedures that we do, cancer surgery is most difficult and most complex. And when I finished my general surgery, I was uh, motivated to do a surgery which is more complex, more difficult. And that's how I chose to become a cancer surgeon because this is of all the branches, the toughest branch to do a most complex surgeries uh, to cure cancer. So that's how I became a cancer surgeon and uh, over the last two decades, I have uh, transformed myself from being an open surgeon to a laparoscopic surgeon and then now uh, for the last one decade, I have become a robotic cancer surgeon. So, is it something like you always wanted to become a doctor? Was it by chance or a choice? Well, uh, I never thought or dreamt that I would become a doctor because uh, I come from a, uh, a village but uh, it so happened that uh, uh, I had uh, the best education and uh, I was given the privilege or the opportunity to study medicine. That's how uh, I pursued medicine and then went on to do the super specialization in surgical oncology. So, surgical oncology, I'm sure that's a challenging field. So, how did you choose this path, doctor? Uh, well, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, not even becoming a doctor was in my remotest mind or uh, imagination. Uh, but uh, because of the good education given to me through Navodaya schools and uh, went on to do the medicine and then do, became a surgeon. And I have a very funny story of how I became a surgeon. Uh, you know, when I was a child, I, I was good in handling the sickle and cutting the grass. And uh, I always say, and that's where my journey as a surgeon began, uh, when I accidentally cut a snake uh, with a sickle. So, I say my journey is now from sickle to scalpel. And with the advent of robotics, I say it is uh, not just sickle to scalpel, but it is a scarless surgery. Fantastic. I think that's interesting that your first encounter was with a snake. <laughs> Any more something like that? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think, uh, you know, I mean, when you look back, uh, it's all providential how, uh, you know, everything works together for good. So, I remember, uh, uh, you know, I, I wanted to kind of get good education and uh, appear for an the entrance uh, exam. And, uh, but I didn't have the boldness to rise up and say to my teacher that I want to write the exam. And uh, it so happened that they selected five students for the exam and uh, three of them get disqualified. And finally, the teacher, you know, confirms two will appear for the entrance. And even as the teacher was about to exit the classroom, an elderly gentleman enters into my room and uh, he says, why not this boy write the exam? And the rest is all history. So, the role of a teacher is uh, very, very significant in my life. That's beautifully said. So, just a personal question, if not a doctor, what you would have been? Well, I can't really imagine uh, what would have been my uh, calling uh, without being a doctor because, uh, well, I've never regretted uh, being a doctor thus far. In the last two decades, not a single day I ever thought why I became a doctor. Though it is a very daunting task, you need to sacrifice a lot of your personal time, family time. But yet, never ever thought why I became a doctor. So, in that sense, probably I do not know what I would have become. But nevertheless, let me re, uh, uh, reconfirm that, you know, this is a calling and a mission. I enjoy it thoroughly. Absolutely. So, doctor, what once seemed impossible in the field of cancer research is now a reality. And thanks to the technological innovations what we have. So, what do you have to say about this? Definitely, there has been a dramatic change with respect to the outcomes in uh, cancer uh, treatment. So, may it be the technological advancements in terms of laparoscopic surgery or may it be robotic surgery or for that matter in terms of the uh, newer drugs that are available or in terms of the radiotherapy techniques that are available today. 
I think we have come a long way. Gone are the old days wherein we used to have a lot of side effects and a lot of disfigurement because of the cancer therapy itself. And today we are looking at a better quality of life and uh, the best outcomes to the patient. So, you've mentioned robotic surgery. So, what is your experience in this field especially? Because I'm sure that robotic surgery is a fancy term. Uh, well, uh, robotic surgery is not new. If I have to say, the robotic surgery has been already in the market for close to two decades now. I was one of the earliest in the country to adopt this technology uh, way back in 2012. That's when uh, I was trained in Paris and uh, Seoul uh, for robotic technology and I went on to uh, get trained even in Roosevelt Park Memorial Cancer Center, uh, Buffalo and also had a short stint at Memorial Sloan Catering Center in New York. So, what I mean to say is that this is uh, the computer technology has come now into the operating room. So, robotic is nothing special in that sense because everywhere we have computer technology and even into the operating room we have computer technology. So, the robot is basically, you know, a master-slave relationship wherein just like how you do a joystick uh, play with for a video games, this is a similar tool that is available so that uh, you sit at a console and the robotic arms are docked to the patient and your instructions are translated into the, uh, you know, the robotic arm uh, movements. So, in that sense, it is uh, basic, essentially a surgery that you perform uh, at the console, but uh, at the patient side, uh, it is the robotic arms which uh, do a precise fine movement. So, if we specifically talk about the benefits of robotic surgery, I am sure it is beneficial for both the doctor as well as the patients. So, what are the benefits of this surgery in particular? Well, uh, after having been a laparoscopic surgery and surgeon for close to one decade and since last 10 years, I have been uh, seeing the difference between the open laparoscopic and robotic surgery. I think the single or the best advantage of robotics is uh, the vision. We have uh, 3D vision unlike in laparoscopy and uh, the other advantage that I find is uh, the magnification with robotics. So, we have a 12x magnification in robotic surgery. It is very precise, the dexterity is good, the instruments have got a fine range of motion, the 7 degree range of motion. For example, you need to reach a deeper area in the pelvis or in the chest. So, these instruments can maneuver and reach those difficult to reach areas very easily. So, in that sense, a complex surgery can be performed easily with robotics than with laparoscopy. And apart from that, some of the advantages to the patient in terms of the outcomes, yes, uh, they have a very less uh, hospital stay, less blood loss, there is a very less infection rate and a quicker return to normal activities. And overall, the experience in the oncological outcomes uh, wise as well, they are much more safe and uh, uh, they, you know, they get all the benefits. So, it is not just for the surgeon, but even for the patient in terms of the oncological outcomes, uh, there is a superiority in many cases and uh, it is, uh, it is the, not just the future I would say, it is the present. I think that's well said. If we want to discuss about the outcomes, is it the same for all the patients or does it vary from patient to patient depending upon the stage of the cancer or what surgery we are taking? Well, uh, oncologically the outcomes depend upon the biology of the disease and also the stage of the disease. So, these two are the strongest determinants for the outcomes in cancer. But with respect to the procedure, what I would say is that from the patient's point of view, the value for a procedure is directly proportional to the, uh, in terms of the efficacy. So, it is directly proportional to efficacy, whereas it is inversely proportional to the invasiveness square. So, less the invasiveness, more the patient value of a procedure. So, the procedure's value is always, you know, uh, looked upon efficacy versus the invasiveness. So, more the efficacy, more the patient value, less the invasiveness, more the value for the patient. So, doctor, it's time to bust few myths. The first one is, the robotic surgery is performed by a robo and the doctor is hands off. Well, uh, it is both, uh, you know, yes and no, because the robotic surgery is still performed by the surgeon himself. It is not 100% robot doing the surgery. So, a surgeon's movements are translated into the robot's movements at the patient's side. So, in that sense, robo itself does not do full surgery. So, surgeon is still in control of the surgery. The next one is, the robotic setup could malfunction during the procedure and that could be dangerous to the patient. What do you have to say about this? In the last uh, one decade, I have never had uh, an issue with respect to the malfunctioning of the equipment. There was only one episode wherein uh, a single arm of the robot did not function and we could continue the procedure with the three arms that are available 
so in that sense it is a pretty robust and a strong system available we, do, we do not have to really worry about the malfunctioning. The next one doctor, robotic surgery is just a fancy surgery with no real difference between robotic and the normal surgery. Well, it is definitely a myth. Uh, it is not a fancy word anymore because see, uh, you know, if I have to give an example, you know, during the World War II, there used to be a fighter jets, you know, they did not have the advanced futures. Today, if you have a, if you look at a fighter jet with auto landing and uh, auto piloting options, which one you would prefer? So, the technology is definitely moved on and uh, you know, it is really beneficial in all spectrums of uh, our life. So, it so be in surgical oncology space as well and uh, in most of the surgeries robotics now is uh, uh, as I said before it is just a computer technology in the operating room it is, it is not a computer technology in OT is not a fancy word. So in that sense I you know I have uh, real time tasted the benefits of robotic surgery for the last 10 years and I can tell you for sure the patients are the beneficiaries uh, by this uh, advent of newer technology. I think I absolutely agree with you on this part, doctor. And the last one, robotic surgery can be performed by any surgeon. Well, uh, robotic surgery can be definitely performed by any surgeon provided they are properly trained. Because the training pathways are very, very important for uh, this kind of an advanced technology. And adoption from open to robotic is not that difficult. Somebody who is a good laparoscopic surgeon can also become a good robotic surgeon. But if you do not have a great laparoscopic skills, yet if you are a good open surgeon, you can become a good robotic surgeon provided you are trained very well. So doctor, there is one question on my mind which I wanted to ask. With a lot of recent advances in the field of medical oncology and cancer drugs as well. So has the burden on the surgeons come down in treating patients? Is that real? Well, uh, yes, what you said is right, uh, Dr. Lakshmi, in terms of the uh, impact of uh, newer drugs in cancer care. I think the outcomes are better for the patient. And in terms of the load for uh, the surgeries as such, I do not say that it has come down. That is because the overall cancer burden is rising. If I can go on to say one in five men will get cancer and one in six women in their lifetime get cancer. So, given our population, I think it is a significant number. The longevity is more early detection is also fast catching up. So, given this, the overall incidence is increasing. That is why I cannot say that it has reduced the load for uh, surgical cases. But one thing is for sure, the advances in medical oncology have made the life very comfortable for the patient. For example, today we talk about precision medicine. So, because of which uh, patients are able to get a precise targeted therapy which has got lowest side effects. So, in, if you look at all this, you know, the benefit is for the end user, the, for the patient. Today, stage 4 lung cancer patient goes on a oral medication, just a simple tablet without side effects and their long, longevity is much more. So, in the, you know, just 10 years back, a stage 4 lung cancer, we were writing them off with 3 to 6 months lifespan. Today, even for stage 4, I have my own patients who are treated for, who are doing well for more than 7 years and with least side effects. So, in that sense, the targeted therapy, the precision therapy, the immunotherapy and today for blood, blood cancer, we have something called CAR T cell therapy. So, all these things are really, you know, coming up in a big way and they are already making a big difference for the patient. I think that's wonderful the way we have made recent advance, advancements, especially in the field of oncology. So, doctor, before ending this episode, what message you would like to give to the society as a cancer care specialist? Well, uh, one message that I want to leave with each one of you watching this video is, cancer is preventable most of the times. 70 percent of the cancer is because of lifestyle and environment. If only we focus on our lifestyle, we can prevent it. If we cannot prevent it, at least we can detect it early so that the outcomes are best. And the technologies, advancements both in surgical, radiation oncology and in medical oncology have made the cancer care much more simpler, much more curative. So, do not lose hope. We all can together beat cancer. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you, doctor. It was wonderful talking to you. Same here. Thank you so much. So, this brings us to the end of this episode. Hope this episode was informative on the topic robotic surgery in the field of surgical oncology. Do join us for the next week as well. Until then, take care and stay healthy. Thank you.